Workshops can be set up in a basement or in another part of the home, such as a garage. Workshops tend to grow out of their space over time. Therefore, planning ahead for expansion is a good idea. Factors to consider when designing a workshop are lighting, heating, cooling, power requirements, as well as access into and out of the workshop. Dust collection is a major consideration since woodworking machinery tends to generate dust. Effective removal of airborne dust becomes important for health and safety reasons. The bare minimum for a workshop consists of a workbench and a few hand tools and you can begin woodworking. More tools and machinery can be added as they are deemed necessary. Placement of workbenches and machines is an important consideration in a workshop. Easy access to these workstations should be part of the workshop design. A workshop with minimal clutter is an efficient workshop. Efficient storage such as wall-mounted cabinets for tools and wall-mounted clamp racks make effective use of wall space. The corners of a workshop can be efficiently used by locating smaller machinery there. Workbenches should ideally be located away from walls as shown so they can be accessed from either side. The bandsaw drill press and router station are placed in the corners of the workshop to maximize space. The table saw is centrally located since considerable room is necessary around the saw for sheet goods and for ripping longer boards. A rolling cart can be used to transport components between workstations when working on a project. High ceilings allow longer work pieces to be moved around. Bright, effective lighting helps in illuminating different workstation and workbench areas. The thickness planer is placed centrally against a wall since access is necessary from both the front and back of the machine. Small workshops are typically hand tool environments. Machinery adds considerably to the space requirements and should be factored in when expanding your workshop. Workflow in a workshop should be designed to be efficient. Placement of benches and machines in the order you typically use them will facilitate your woodworking. Guidelines are provided here for optimal spacing of workbenches and machinery. Lumber storage space should be allocated. Access into and out of the shop become important as both lumber and furniture pieces can be large and wide. Fluorescent lamp fixtures are an efficient and effective type of lighting for large areas. When a workshop has greater power requirements, a sub-panel or pony panel should be considered. This enables dedicated power circuits in the workshop. Larger machinery typically runs more efficiently on 220 volt circuits. These circuits are easily installed through a pony panel or a sub-panel. Unless you are using hand tools exclusively in your workshop, a dust collection system should be set up. A combination of fixed and flexible piping run to specific machines removes dust at the source before it becomes airborne. Blast gates control dust collection from each machine to maximize the volume of air into the dust collector. Dust collectors are high volume systems. Woodworking dust collection systems typically are 4 inch piping due to the high volume of air being extracted from machines. Higher power dust collection systems allow for longer piping and the capability for multiple machines to be used simultaneously. A good DC size to begin with is 1.5 horsepower as it is affordable and provides adequate vacuum in a small shop. Shown is a typical 1.5 horsepower dust collector with both fixed and flexible piping as well as a cyclone lid and shaving drum. Another 1.5 horsepower dust collector for a second set of machines. The clear cyclone lid and black drum separate shavings from dust to effectively create a two-stage dust collection system. This is a very inexpensive and effective method of incorporating a two-stage dust collector system into your workshop. The cyclone drum extracts larger shavings from the airstream. Shown is a bandsaw modified with two dust ports. These two ports combine to effectively collect most of the dust generated by the bandsaw. The two ports are then combined through a Y adapter. 
A large capacity thickness planer set up with a cyclone lid and shaving drum. These machines generate a tremendous amount of wood shavings and the cyclone setup is very effective in capturing these shavings before they reach the dust collector bag. Shown is a thickness planer set up with a dust collection tubing and blast gate. The planer is placed against the wall with plenty of space ahead and behind the machine to allow for longer boards. Shown are wall mounted cabinets adapted for hand plane storage. Each hand plane has its own customized compartment. The compartments can be easily assembled using lengths of dimension left over wood. The cabinet doors are effective in keeping dust off the tools. The cabinet cases are assembled with reinforced corners using dowels which will be discussed later. Shown is a hanging tool cabinet with a Lexan door panel. The tools are visible with this type of door. The case is assembled with reinforced miter joinery at the corners. This is discussed later. These small wall mounted tool cabinets make efficient use of wall space which would otherwise go unused. These identical cabinets are larger and deeper allowing for more tools to be stored inside. The cases are reinforced with dowels and decorative plugs whereas the doors are a frame and panel construction. The dimensions can be adjusted to suit your wall space. The doors attach with piano hinges which are fairly straightforward to install. There is an inner cleat in the cabinet which strengthens the attachment to the walls. A fairly standard pegboard shown here with hooks for different tools. The pegboard is offset from the wall to allow space for the back of the hooks. More commonly used tools which don't fit into a cabinet can be placed here. A basement workshop makes efficient use of home space since the heating, cooling and power requirements are readily available from the home. A drawback is not so convenient access unless there is a dedicated outside entrance to the basement. Turned stairways are inherently safer than straight stairs but moving larger objects can be an issue. Most home woodworking shops are situated in a basement area. It is good practice to place walls around the workshop to minimize dust and noise from the rest of the basement. Workbenches are the cornerstone of a workshop. They range in size depending upon your needs. Large, heavy and stable workbenches are better suited to woodworking. Workbenches should have at least one vise, preferably a face vise. A shoulder or end vise is optional but greatly enhances the versatility of the bench. Bench dogs along the edges of a bench are designed to hold horizontal work in conjunction with an end vise. Vices are available in metal or wood. Metal vices were originally designed for metal making workshops but have been adapted for woodworking through the addition of hardwood faces. Solid wood vices are better suited to woodworking. Their mechanisms and shafts are made of hard-wearing steel. Metal vices can be hung from the bottom of a workbench. Workbenches can be designed with large drawers as shown here. The drawers make efficient use of space beneath the workbench. However, there will be no access to the underside of the work surface. Shown is a metal vise which has been attached to the workbench and serves as a face vise. Shown is a large shop made workbench with a metal vise attached. The metal vise has hardwood faces to minimize any damage to a workpiece being clamped. The large faces also increase the capacity of the vise. A row of bench dock holes can also be seen along the front edge. These holes are standard 3 quarter inch diameter to make use of widely available bench dogs. The sliding dead man enables long workpieces to be effectively held horizontally as shown. Storage is designed into this workbench. The underside of the worktop is accessible for adjustment of bench dogs. A better view of the metal face vise with added hardwood faces. These vices typically have quick release levers to quickly extend the vise. One hardwood face is embedded into the workbench to bring the workpiece closer to the bench. A manufactured workbench shown here which has most of the features necessary in a workbench. 
A face vise, an end vise, bench dog holes, and a tool tray are all incorporated into this design. Workbenches can be shop made or purchased, such as this one. Purchasing one will get you going quicker at woodworking. The shelf below is an add-on. The workbench surface consists of two inch thick slabs of hard maple. The shop made lumber rack shown here makes efficient use of wall space. It is constructed of dimension softwood readily available at any home center. This design also allows boards to be readily seen for selection. The lumber rack is attached directly to wall studs through the use of lag bolts. Shown are a pair of shop made clamp racks. Again the emphasis is on effective use of wall space. The clamp racks are customized for the collections of clamps shown. Criteria for clamp racks are quick access and clearly visible clamps as well efficient use of space. Woodworking should only be performed when you are completely alert. Most if not all tools have sharp edges or spinning edges or blades. It is far too easy to get hurt when not completely focused on the task at hand. Keeping the workshop floor clean and tidy eliminate clutter and any risk of falling or tripping. Safety glasses should be worn when using powered machinery. The best approach is to maintain a deep respect for your tools.